everybody, Sharp Neck Limited, Punk Strains. Uh, we're going to be taking apart the 2035 today to investigate a short which has developed and uh, try to open it up and see how to fix it. A homemade cradle made up of leftover foam is good to keep the locomotive secure and to prevent screws from falling on the floor. To get at the motor of the 2035, you have to remove the shell, which means you have to remove the valve gear, including the eccentric crank, the valve gear screw, and the valve stem. The crosshead gear, and you may have to move the wheel to get the crosshead off. And the crosshead guide and the crosshead guide screw, they can come off at the same time. Then repeat it on the other side. Note the spacer and make sure it goes back in the same place when you put it back. A picture will do really well for this. Aside from dropping them on the floor, screws and pieces can sometimes fall either into the shell or onto the magnet traction motor. Keep an eye out for those. It happens all the time. I have searched on the floor many minutes only to find the screws magnetized to the motor. You can unscrew the two steam chest screws at this time. The side motor screw is a pin that goes through the entire locomotive, making sure that the steam chest, the chassis, and the motor are all in alignment. I'm prying it out here, but you could also use a pliers. After removing the steam chest screws, you should put your hand on the bottom of the model and then turn it over to get the last screw that will release the motor, the top motor screw. At this point, the motor and the steam chest should be able to come right out. Make sure the smoke mutant lever is put in the bin for your other parts. And here's the motor and the steam chest. And here's the short. It's an exposed piece of wire which was touching the chassis. I didn't do a very good job of sealing up that splice. The smoke unit puffs the smoke out in a piston action. The E unit changes polarity of the motor and therefore the direction. The motor field is a stationary magnet that interacts with the electromagnet in the armature to make the gears go. On the other side, you can see the brushes. The armature is behind that. And that is the power connection to the third rail. While I was in here, I decided to go ahead and shore up the uh, solder at that location. And this is where the light and smoke unit would connect to. If the motor has a heart, it would be the commutator face. And uh, you want to clean that with uh, a TV tuner or electronics cleaner. Or you could also use an eraser on a pencil. To clean the uh, brush wells, you'd add some more... TV tuner or uh, electronics cleaner, and uh, you can use Q-tips to get the gunk out of there. The brushes can be cleaned with the electronics cleaner, or you could also use a Scotch-Brite to shine up the ends of those. Because the brushes are spring-loaded, they often try to pop out. Observe my method of putting this back on, and so they don't pop out. Then you just have to replace the screws on the brush plate assembly uh, to put the motor back together. It is rewarding to be able to service these machines which contain so much memory and keep them running and uh, in good condition for future people to uh, enjoy. Now the careful operation of putting the motor back into the chassis uh, occurs. Uh, put the light bulb in first is what I have tried to do, 
and have that come out the front. Then uh, once you have the motor seated, you can put the steam chest back in. But before you do that, you have to make sure that the smoke unit has all of its levers and pistons uh, all together. This takes patience and practice. Now we put all the valve gear back and put all the screws back in. Here we're starting with the crosshead and the crosshead guide. Then the valve gear. You can see I've also inserted already the motor screw. Now you return the eccentric crank and screw. And when you put it in, tighten it and then see if it turns correctly. If it feels a little wonky or if it's catching, adjust it so it looks a little like this and then fix it. It should turn like this. Add a little dab of oil to the places where metal will slide against metal. And then you repeat this entire process on the other side. The 2035 is a wonderful engine, a wonderful runner, but this process needs to be done, preferably yearly. But the involved process of taking off the valve gear always dissuaded me from doing my yearly maintenance anything other than every three or four years. I'm hoping that with this video, it'll help me remember. And when it's time for you to serve as your locomotive, feel free to come back and take a look at this video one more time to watch it step by step. And uh, that'll help you uh, get over that hump of taking off the valve gear uh, to access the motor. Here's an example of what it looks like when it sticks. Uh, that's not right. You want to adjust the crank pin one more time and then give it another try. And then when it moves freely like this, you're good. Go ahead and add the oil and move the wheels to spread it. And then the final step is to put the face boiler face back on. Remember when you need to do this, you want to put the light in the clip or else it will not light. It needs to be clipped to the chassis. <coughs> and let's see if it runs. And it does. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has helped you as you service your 2035. I encourage you to come back every year to this video and when it's time to service your 2035 again and this will help you remember how to take it apart and service it to get at the internal parts. Have a great week and talk to you soon.